All right, what is going on, everybody? Quan Credible here, bringing you the review for Black Clover episode 147. Now, not a whole, whole lot happened in this episode. I mean, most of it was just them. Well, not most of it. Literally all of it was just get them getting through the, uh, the mountain pass to try to at least get to the border, uh, leaving the Clover Kingdom. And um, I will say, like, this episode was definitely a quality drop. I would say, like, I don't know if any of you noticed, but there's a couple scenes in the middle where, like, Asta is talking to Dazu and Bo, and it just seems really weird how the screen is, like, split, if it was even split at all, um, because they're, like, they're supposedly up way higher than he is, but a couple of the scenes, like, right here, they appear to be, like, directly next to each other, um, with Nero being, like, literally in, like, arm's reach, it just, there's just a couple things that just looked weird, so I will say it was a bit of a quality drop, um, we did get more of some exposition, kind of. We finally got that confirmation that, um, that you know, Dazu's husband was a piece of trash. But I'll go more into that uh, in just a bit. I do want to cover the beginning of the episode at the very least first. Um, so, you know, at the beginning of the episode, it just picked up right where it left off with Magna and them trailing uh, Dazu and Bo and the rest of the uh, Believers, which is a huge group of people. Like, we really got to see it. Like, like when you see, like, the mountain pass with, like, the whole zigzag trail, there's easily 100 people here. Like, minimum, minimum 100 people, I'm saying. Like, it seemed like there was a lot of people. And, um, and they're all trying to make it through to the, uh, to, you know, get out of the border of the Clover Kingdom to be in the strong magic region because at that point, they'll be out of the Clover Kingdom's jurisdiction. And it's weird because I see what I see like what they're getting at, like from their perspective, like, oh, yeah, once we get out of their jurisdiction, we should be good to go. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, that doesn't really happen all like that. Like just because you leave someone's jurisdiction doesn't mean they're going to stop trailing you like <laughs> Like, like if I'm speeding, if I'm speeding in one township and I cross over to the border of another township, the police don't just stop following me. You know what I'm saying? Like they're going to they're going to stay on me and still, you know, give me that ticket. So like I don't quite know what they're thinking. Like the Magic Knights are already on your trail just because you go into the strong magic reason. They're still going to be at you. But, you know, I'll chalk that up just to, you know, how the story makes them think. Um. And also, I like the uh, I like the callback to the full moon weakening strong magic regions. We haven't seen that since the um, underwater sea temple. I don't know if a lot of you remember, but one of the main reasons why they were even able to make it to the underwater sea temple is not only because of Noel's um, sea dragon's cradle, it, uh, also because the full moon weakened the currents. Like that. That's like a like I really liked how they like made that a reoccurring thing. Full moons weaken strong magic regions. I, I like that a lot. Um, uh, I will say one of the things that did kind of like irk me in the beginning half of the episode uh, was Magna. You know, Magna saying, you know, you guys stay right here and I'll be back with some reinforcements. Uh, it just seemed like like uh, like Magna knows Asta really well. Like he knows Asta. So Magna would have had to have known Asta is not going to stay there. So I'd rather him would have said, like, don't get in too much trouble. I'll be back. Like, I, like granted, you could say that that's kind of, of like nitpicky. But, you know, Magna just kind of expecting Asta to stand around was a little weird. Also, how long Magna was gone? It was like, geez, bro, like, you were gone all episode. Like, they, 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 like you left, like, like late evening and didn't get back to, like, getting close to the morning. Like, he was gone for hours. And I understand, you know, peasant, low magic amount, you know, a limit to what he can do. But, man, he, he really did take his sweet time getting those reinforcements. But there, from there, uh, we get, you know, Noelle using her Valkyrie dress to more or less carry Asta all the way to where the Devil Believers are. They're able to catch up with them, and Asta just wants to have a conversation with him to see if he can fix it, which, you know, is very in line with Asta's character. This is definitely what he would like to do, ideally, with most villains or antagonists. Is he would at least like to talk to them to figure out, like, if they can come to a common ground. And, you know, of course, to no one's surprise, they aren't. Uh, actually, what surprised me is that they kind of, like, worship asta as like he's he's like their not he's not their master but they see him as like a like i uh as like an idol almost like uh they they are all aspiring to be like him just because of how much he was able to accomplish with the uh with the powers of a devil which i mean like i was saying in my last video it makes sense from their perspective like they literally can barely use any magic at all so a lot of them are in 
realistically the same boat Asta was. Um, just, you know, from their perspective, the only difference is that Asta got the powers of the devil and they didn't. Uh, and seeing what Asta was able to do with that, of course, they want that as well. Now, from here, we get, you know, like Bo really going into how terrible uh, her husband and her uh, stepmother was, which we kind of knew that was a that was a thing because she wasn't happy and in her marriage picture at the very beginning of this filler arc, you know, she didn't seem happy. Cause I know like a lot of you guys in in the comments, we 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 we've we've legit talked about it. Like we've talked about how there's definitely more to it. So you know that there's not it's not a huge huge reveal that that you know they were trash and. And even like, uh, despite hearing all that, Asta was like, you know, I understand where you guys are coming from, but like, I never despised anybody. I just wanted everybody to be happy. And I like how the believers, even Bo and Dazu, are able to admit that if they could have that mindset, they would have been much better off. But it's just like, it's too late for them. And I, I really do like that take when antagonists or characters do that because it's 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 very real. Like there's lots of times where, where like myself, where I'm pretty sure a lot of you have gotten into a point where you're upset or sad or you're just feeling some type of way about something, and you know that if you could think about it differently, you would be better off. But it's like it, you're just too far gone. Like it, it's a very real thing that people do experience. So like I kind of like how how that played out. Um, and then we get to like the last part of the episode with them bargaining, uh, where Asa's like, you know, take me instead and let Nero go. You know, me and my grandma should be enough as gifts for the Spade Kingdom, which this part bothered me a lot just because like they, you know, cuff Asta, they cuff Noel, and Asa's like, all right, now, now let go of uh, Nero. And they're like, oh, we're going to let go of her when we, when we actually get there. And Asa's like, I believe them. But then literally, like, in the same scene, they're talking about, oh, yes, we have three gifts now. And it's just like, so they're, like, kind of openly talking about how they're not going to do what you ask them to do. And you're still staying restrained. Like, I understand they don't want to fight them because, you know, they understand where they're coming from. But at the same time, I feel like if these guys are just going to act dumb, might as well just beat them up. You know, to just rough them up a little bit, take Nero back, and just call it a day. I mean, Asta and Noel, Asta without his grimoire and Noel should be more than enough to knock out all these guys. But, you know, just like, I, like I, I get it. They're not trying to do this violently. But, uh... It, it, it's a good thing because at the very end of the episode, Yami drops down. Like, Magna finally comes back and drops down with Yami. So, I, I'm very interested to see how this is going to play out because Yami's one of those characters where, he, of course, Yami's going to do what he can with talking. But uh, at the exact same time, violence is right behind whatever his message is. So, so he'll be able to, you know, stop whatever craziness is about to go down. I am interested with what they mentioned, uh, them pulling all of their magic together with um, Dazu's Catalyst magic. Because that sounds like it could be really powerful. Because, like, uh, even if it is, like, 100 people that are all fodder, if you, like, combine all that together, it could potentially be worth something. Now, do I think that's enough to beat Asta or Yami? Probably not. Enough to give them a challenge? Highly doubt it. Enough to kind of be cool? That's, that's probably right where it is. It's definitely enough to just be kind of cool. So really interested to see where they go with that the previews for next episode look really really cool we get to see damn and we get william with his mask back on i like <sighs> william without his mask i get it it's like a personal statement but he's horribly ugly <laughs> so it's like i'd rather him leave the mask on plus the mask is kind of cool like the, the whole tacky mask has grown on me it adds to his whole allure and his mystery and all that so hopefully he gets to keep that uh the, the mask and I was saying earlier, though, the episode was all right. Like, it wasn't like, like, the bulk of it was them in that one area. But there was, like, lots of, like, exposition and stuff on that note. So, and, and, and also, there was, like, the whole setup for next episode. So, it, it wasn't that bad. I would definitely give it, like, it's, it's like a strong six. Like, a strong six out of ten. It wasn't amazing by any means, but just, like, slightly very slightly better than average it wasn't that bad uh a bad episode by any means um definitely still you know i'm still feeling the same way as i always have about this uh little filler arc uh, i definitely think if i was watching it binge like just from the very beginning and just like watching it like at my own pace to just get through it i feel like i would like it a lot more but but you know 
it is what it is on that one. So let me know what you, how you guys are feeling about it down below. Uh, how are you guys feeling about the episode? How you felt about Asta's bargaining? Um, let me know if you guys noticed how kind of awkward it seemed with some of the scenes kind of towards the middle part. Yeah, I'm just kind of, I just want to see generally how you guys are feeling about this episode as a whole. Um, outside of that, uh, make sure you guys like the video as well as sub to the channel. I definitely want the channel to grow as big as it possibly can. I know I keep saying it a lot, but it's only because I need you guys' help to make that happen. Um, I have nothing else for you guys. Hope everybody has enjoyed the rest of their day, and I will catch you in my next video.